Respiratory distress syndrome of the newborn is a medical term that encompasses all respiratory difficulties encountered in infants under 28 days old. Due to its high prevalence and potential severity, it's one of the most common reasons for hospitalization in neonatal intensive care unit. It is considered a medical emergency due to its potential impact on the infant's vital and neurological prognosis. The diagnosis is based on the characteristic triad, which includes the following three main signs. Cyanosis. Cyanosis manifests as a bluish or gray discoloration of the skin and the mucous membrane, indicating inadequate oxygenation of the blood. Tachypnea, defined as an increase in the respiratory rate in newborn. This results in rapid and shallow breathing, with a respiratory rate often exceeding 16 cycles per minute. Tachypnea is a common sign of respiratory distress in infants. Irregular respiratory rate mood or episodes of apnea, defined as respiratory arrest lasting more than 20 seconds in a newborn, are considered a sign of severe respiratory distress. These symptoms may indicate an increased risk of respiratory exhaustion, where the infant's respiratory muscles become fatigued and unable to maintain adequate breathing. 3. Signs of Retractions Signs of retraction are visible signs of increased respiratory effort. This includes intercostal muscle retractions, subcostal recessions, or what we call exophoid funnel, a nasal flurry, thoracoabdominal swinging, and expiratory grunting. <laughs> These signs often indicate significant respiratory difficulty. The severity of respiratory distress is diagnosed through a throughout assessment of several clinical criteria that reflect the severity of the condition and its impact on various body systems. First, severe respiratory distress, characterized by a generalized stenosis, is an alarming sign of poor blood oxygenation. Signs of respiratory exhaustion. Respiratory exhaustion is characterized by a decrease in signs of retraction, such as intercostal retractions and nasal flooring as well as respiratory irregularities such as respiratory pauses or gasping. These signs indicate a fatigue of respiratory muscles and deterioration of lung function. Hemodynamic disorders like prolonged capillary refill time measured by pressing on the skin and assessing the time it takes to return to its normal color indicate poor tissue perfusion and deterioration of blood circulation. High heart rate or tachycardia often exceeding the normal range of the infant's gestational age is a physiological response to stress and respiratory distress. Abnormally low systemic blood pressure or arterial hypertension may result from poor tissue perfusion leading to circulatory dysfunction and endangering the vitality of the vital organ. Neurological disorders like hypotonia or hypertonia. Muscle hypertonia characterized by abnormally low muscle tone or muscle hypertonia characterized by abnormally high muscle tone may be observed. These neurological disorders may result from cerebral hypoxia associated with severe respiratory distress. Seizures may also occur due to the severe cerebral hypoxia. Altered consciousness, characterized by altered states of consciousness ranging from lethargy to stupor. Hyperreactivity, a decreased or absent response to external stimuli, may also be observed. This hyperreactivity may be associated with general neurological dysfunction. In conclusion, the assessment of severity criteria allows the identification of infants with severe respiratory distress requiring urgent and intensive management to stabilize their condition and prevent serious complications. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.